Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'll do today, I will talk about uh, prompt engineering. Um, so in my previous episode, I did mention about generative AI. And so if you haven't watched that episode, I would highly encourage you to go and watch that because some of the things uh, which I might uh, discuss in this episode might be related to some of the stuff I discussed in the previous episode, for instance, the type of models. Um, I'm not going to talk about, uh, you know, in detail um, what each model means. Um, so because the today's session is, is specific uh, about prompt engineering. Now, you might have heard this term quite often, prompt engineering. Perhaps you might have, or perhaps you may not. Right, um, in Salesforce ecosystem, right, especially um, Salesforce um, Einstein Copilot, there is a conversation that's going on around prompt builder and prompt engineering, right? And you would have wondered, what is that even supposed to mean, right? And you would have, you might have even heard about job opportunities where um, some companies, uh, I've I've heard that it's in Europe, they're even willing to pay. 250k, right, for a prompt engineers, which is a bit interesting in my opinion. Um, so, what is prompt engineering, right? So, so I will give you the the definition here. Then I will explain to you in a very simple way what it means, right? So, as you can see um, on the screen, that uh, prompt engineering involves designing and refining prompts or input queries to improve the performance of AI model, particularly in natural language processing. Mm, that sounds a bit mouthful, right? <laughs> so in simple terms, right? Um, imagine you have an AI model, um, could be any model. Um, so AI model is like a model, like I said in my previous episode. Um, think about a model, a very, it's like a black box, um, which you are going to train using substantial amount of data. And the, and the box gets smarter, smarter, smarter over the course of time as you train it, right? Now, obviously, you wanted to access the information from the model, right? I mean, you, and in, in, a, in a humanly possible way, right? Could be using English, or could be using, like I said, could be Hebrew, uh, could be using Sanskrit, or could be using Norwegian language, or could be Swedish, right? Could be anything. Now, to do that, your AI model uh, interface, right? AI model, let's say, considers like a a, um, a lower layer where all your data is trained and like a box. Now, obviously, you need to access the content of the box. Now, to access the content of that box, which is like AI model, you need to have an interface. And now that interface obviously needs to support a human human language. Right, that's where the natural language processing comes into picture. And now this is what the concept of prompt engineering is about, right? Where you are writing queries, queries in the sense English text or any other language text to get the desired output. For instance, you can say, Hey, can you please tell me what's the weather looks like in Wellington today, right? Or in Palmerston North today. So it will give you an information, right? Or can you read a story to me? Or can you tell me um, uh, who win uh, the war in Avenger Endgame? So it's like, as you can see that this is more like a human uh, conversation that you're having with your model, right? With your AI model. Now, Obviously, prompt engineering, in or in other words, uh, you can also talk about prompt builder. So remember, I spoke about the interface, right? So the prompt builder is an interface which uh, works on the concept of prompt engineering to interact with your AI models. So the AI model that sits under the hood and any kind of extraction or the data extraction you wanted to do, um, you use the interface, which is the prompt builder, right? And you use natural language process. That's why I was saying that NLP is very critical in in the Gen AI space. Like you have seen the chat GPD, how the chat GPD interact, right? Um, some of this, that is a kind of a prompt 
uh, engineering, you could say, what ChatGPT is offering to the world. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have listed a few models here. Um, there are other models, but these are the most commonly used models. That's the Open AI GPT series, right? Your GPT three, GPT uh, sorry, GPT three point five, GPT four. Uh, then you have BERT, uh, bi-directional encoder representation from Transformers. These are uh, based on uh, um, Transformer architecture. So I'm not going to get into the Transformer architecture. I briefly discussed in the previous episode when I was talking about Gen AI. So if you haven't watched that, I will highly encourage you to go and watch it, right? Then you have T5. That's a text-to-text -text transfer transformer, right? So that's why it's a it's a 5T, so it says T5. So these are different kinds of models. Uh, out of many models, that currently supports, you know, um, uh, prompt engineering. Okay, now this is a very common question. Is prompt engineering really an AI, right? If you have ever followed, if you have read my LinkedIn post, right, I once said <clears throat> most of the people are in the false assumption that once they know prompt engineering, they know artificial intelligence. That is absolutely not the case, right? Prompt engineering is not artificial intelligence, right? It is not an AI. Like, it is a kind of an enabler of AI because what are you trying to do here is trying to access a model that's already been trained. So if you are not involved in training the model, if you don't, in, if you're not involved in anything that goes under the hood, then that's not really an artificial intelligence. It's like you're working on the surface without knowing um, what's going on under the hood. It's it's same analogy I wanted to give. Uh, like driving. You know how to drive a car, right? But driving a car is different than someone who's building a car, right? You're not a a car engineer or or someone who designs car. You're just a driver, right? So that's exactly the prompt engineering. You're a user of an AI model and using, uh, uh, you know, the certain techniques. Does that mean you don't have to be skillful? No, that's not what I'm saying. You need to be skillful. It's like driving a car, right? Just because you haven't designed the car doesn't mean that you you don't need a skill to drive a car. You need to be exceptionally skilled to drive uh, efficiently, right? So uh, I hope that's clear, you know, the, the, uh, the difference, right? Yes, it's an enabler of AI. It enhances the capability of existing AI model by leveraging um, human uh, creativity to uh, to get the desire up, right? So that's one of the things you need to understand. And this is one of the mistakes I often see people make. Hey, I do prompt engineering, so I'm an AI engineer. No, you're not. I'm, I'm sorry to say you're not an AI engineer. AI engineering is entirely different, right? Like I said, unless you know how the machine learning works or the deep learning works, you can't really call yourself as an AI engineer, right? Um, then you are basically a prompt engineer, which is the right term to use. Okay. Now, there are a few drawbacks of uh, prompt engineering. It depends upon the human creativity. Obviously, that is very true. Uh, if you remember the same analogy I gave uh, with respect to driving a car. So you do need to be a skilled driver. Just because you haven't designed the car doesn't mean that you can drive the car the way you want. There are certain rules and regulations. There are certain tricks. Um, there are certain guidelines. The same analogy goes with the prompt engineering. It depends on the human creativity, right? You may not get the desired output every single time. That's why not everyone is a Formula One driver, right? Not everyone uh, is an Anton Sinner or, or Michael Schumacher, right? There's a difference. That's the same analogy, right? Not everyone is a extremely talented uh, prompt engineer, right? It depends on the skill set. So it depends upon the human creativity. Um, and also, you will not get the desired output in the first try. You need to do trial and error. You need to try a few times to get the desired output. Now, the model limitation is very important. Your, it doesn't matter how creative you are. At the end of the day, it depends on the model, right? You're not training your model. Yeah, your model. So 
think so your model like i said it's like a black box right so your model has to be trained before you start even using it so that's why your model needs to be llm the large language model so it needs to be pre-trained with the right amount of the data the training data set and once you're happy with that then you can use uh you can use that interface um to do um uh, prompt engineering and it may not be possible to scale every time because you might expect a different outcome uh, you want it to scale. So it may not be feasible uh, to do the scalability uh, because, of, you know, uh, again, like I said, a limitation will be based on the models. If your model is, let's say, if, like for instance, right, uh, I can use prompt engineering um, on my climate change model because we are, Going, because we are supporting NLP, but that model is trained on climate change data. It's not going to give you anything to do with something else, right? Um, it will not be capable of giving, let's say, transhumanism data, right? It will not be capable of giving a data on nanotech, um, maybe, uh, you know, let's say something else, right? So that's why it's very important um, that you to understand, right? So that that's why believe that it's very important for you guys to learn these fundamentals before you get into all those uh, juicy stuff, right? Nitty-gritty stuff. Uh, or not nitty-gritty stuff, sorry. Fancy stuff or juicy stuff, as we say. Um, so it's very important for you guys to understand these things before you get into that, right? Otherwise, you, you know, you say, hey, pr I'm a prompt engineer. And that's why there are a lot of misconception out there. A prompt engineering is not an artificial intelligence. It is an enabler of AI, right? I've been trying to convince people to say, "Look, you're not an AI engineer," and I'm, and I wanted to be very polite, right, and 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 not super blunt because obviously people take offense when you say, "Hey, you're not an AI engineer." I'm breaking the myth, but that's the truth. Can you work with a deep learning model? Can you fine tune it? If you say no, then you're not really an AI engineer, my friend. Uh, but that's fine. That's an opportunity if that's something you're interested, right? There are a lot of uh, tools out there. Start with Python. Uh, or you can use Julia. That's another language that's getting very popular. Um, you can use Java as well, right? But Python is the most common because for whatever reason, Python is not a very beautiful language, right? It's not a you know awesome language. Just because you know, scientists decides to write algorithms on, like, for instance, you have SkyKit, SkyKit learning. Uh, there are pandas libraries, right? Um, there are different libraries out there, um, which is uh, built on top of Python. Now, which makes Python very popular in today's time, thanks to data science uh, libraries, right? Uh, that being said, Julia is, is getting better. Uh, so in the future, you might use Julia, or um, you can also use, uh, you know, like I said, Java is there. Microsoft has their own, you know, Microsoft machine learning uh, kit, so which you can use that as well. Um, Apple has their own stuff, right? There are different companies that use their own libraries for different things. Um, so if you are interested to learn, um, you know, machine learning, deep learning, I will recommend starting with Python. It'll make it very easy for you because there are a lot of help documentation out there. It's a bigger user community out there, right? You can use even TensorFlow. Um, if, if you want more structured one, then you can go with TensorFlow or PyTorch, right? Whichever works for you, right? PyTorch is um, open source. Uh, from Facebook, uh, TensorFlow, again, is an open source uh, from Google, right? So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Google fan, so I use a lot of stuff uh, with the Google, even the Google Cloud, so I'm a bit biased when it comes to that, but it's up to you whichever you want to go with, right? There are different tools out there, and there are different learning material out there. So, so that's all I wanted to cover uh, in uh, today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something about prompt engineering today in today's episode. That being said, hope you guys have an amazing Wednesday. Adios.